it really, you don't, like, it doesn't really have anything to do with the ionic and anionic, right? Uh, let's see. That's a, a, a bit of a, a more of a, a subtlety. I guess we can get into that uh, if you like. Well, I just um, feel yeah. like it was the opposite. Like, in the book, mm -hmm. it had, like, some ionic compound, but it went through, um, like, SN2. So then it said that the polar product was... Okay, so if you want to, uh, uh, in order to, that's a little bit more of a subtle point, so I'd have to look at the specific part of the book or the specific part of your notes where you talked about that and see what they were talking about there. Um, I'm not sure. Let me see if I have it written down. But frankly, that might not be the best use of our time right okay. now. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, so let's not do that. I think you have this, but you can look at it anyways. For 49C, I just had, um, for ranking each of them, increasing SN2 activity. I understand why it's one, two, three, but um, if you had a ring of this versus a chain with the same number of carbons, which one would be worse for SN2? Right. Well, remember, it's not really the number of carbons. It's uh, because remember that once, the car once you have a long chain, most of the carbons are so far away from the alpha carbon that they don't matter. What really matters is how substituted the alpha carbon is. So if we had something that literally looked, it was like, um, CH32, CHCL. Does that work? CH. Like this? CH3 parentheses 2. Like, so that there's two uh -huh. CH3s. And then, and then that with a, a hex, um, cyclohexane. Basically. Go ahead and write it out for me. Okay. <laughs> well, I, basically I want something so that this is sub so I understand how this is substituted. So this one and this one That's right. are affecting this. That's so right. what if it looked exactly oh, like right. that, but it was in a line? Yeah, that's a good question. So you're kind of comparing right, these compar two. comparing those two. That's right. So what type of carbon is this alpha carbon, primary, secondary, or tertiary? Secondary. Mm -hmm. And how about this one? Secondary. So first of all, these should be pretty similar. They should right. be pretty similar in reactivity. Which one is better? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, right. I'm not sure. I don't know if there's going to be a big difference between these. They might cover this in the textbook. If the you textbook say? If yeah. I haven't read the textbook, but yeah. if you if you had to make a guess, would it be logical to say that the left one was better because there are less carbon total? So, like, in yeah. essence, it could have maybe made a difference? Yeah, so maybe this has a little bit more steric hindrance because it's got more carbons. On the other hand, maybe there's less steric hindrance because these carbons are kind of locked in place by the ring, so they might not be able to wave around as much. So, so it's, it's uh, I can't actually, uh, this is something you might have to do the experiment on, or I don't, I don't really know what the pattern is uh, for this. Just by looking at it, the two things I could say is this has more carbons, which would tend to give it more steric hindrance, but they might actually be waving around less because they're locked into the ring. That might give you less steric hindrance. And which one dominates, I actually don't know off the top of my head. And if it's if you have a long chain and it's substituted at the very end, so completely on the other side of the alpha carbon, mm -hmm. um, that isn't really a big steric hindrance, right? So if you have that versus something that was like, like this? two, yeah, that was yeah. two carbons long and then it was substituted right at the alpha carbon, the longer chain would be better. Yeah, in fact, again, everything like past no, the first if, couple if of carbons was, is totally irrelevant. If, yeah, if that one, if the one on the top was substituted, like, at number two carbon or something like that, yeah, yeah. The, the longer one would be better, right? That's right. Remember, the length really doesn't make much difference. Okay. Adding maybe one or two extra carbons might slow you down a little, but once you get past that, the carbons are so far away, they don't make much difference. Oh, actually, um, we talked about this at the beginning. Maybe we maybe weren't here yet when we actually talked about that. Had she shown up when we talked about this? No. Oh, maybe not. Yeah. So uh, we talked about the idea that the first... So remember that what matters here is steric hindrance that blocks the alpha carbon. Well, this first carbon is close enough to the alpha carbon to block it. And maybe this carbon is close enough to the alpha carbon to block it. But once you get out here, these are so far away, they're, they're rarely going to be close enough to make any difference. Okay. So overall, the length of the chain doesn't really matter. Again, by far the most important thing is primary, secondary, or tertiary on the alpha carbon. Okay. All these things, by the way, that we're talking about here, uh, these are subtleties that you might be tested on, but your first priority should be predicting products, uh, deciding whether a reaction is SN1, SN2, E1, or E2, and predicting the right products, and then doing synthesis from that. And these are kind of fine points um, that are not the, the most important things. Okay, so should we just move on to like E1 and E2? Oh, 
quick question. Um, we this was the correct product. We had so mm -hmm. we had this, and then we ended up with a hydrogen on this positive oxygen. Why does this hydrogen leave voluntarily? Right. I think we saw a bunch of examples of that last time, right? But it was so. usually attacked by something. This one just leaves. Like they oh. said in the in the products that in the yeah. solutions that nothing like it just left. Yeah, that's actually just, uh, it doesn't really just leave. There is something that's picking it up. They just were too lazy to draw it. Okay. So, if you've got, say, So, for example, suppose you have this. Oh, oh, right. Suppose you have this. Well, nature doesn't like having this charge here. So, we talked about last time that a good way to get rid of a charge is to deprotonate. Um, so somebody's going to come in and take that proton. In this case, it was when was the probably this guy took the proton because he's got a negative these, charge. In right? these examples, it didn't like in the solution. It just showed the hydrogen leaving by itself. Right. Yeah, that one it, it, it had the arrow of the hydrogen leaving. That's why we were right. confused. Okay. Yeah. So let's clarify that. There must be somebody who's taking this hydrogen. Maybe it's a uh, sulfonate. So there might be a, a sulfonate leaving group around. So what's actually happening is this. Even though they don't show that? That's right. But eventually Their people... arrow was the hydrogen, was the bond going to, to the, the hydrogen. hydrogen. Yeah, not to the oxygen. Can you show me that? You might be misremembering that. Okay, like I have it on the board. Yeah, okay. okay, yeah. So, eventually people start taking shortcuts and they stop showing who's taking the proton. Um, okay. But it's really best for a beginning student to always show who's taking the proton. But you should know that sometimes in the textbook they'll be lazy and they won't actually show who's taking the proton. So this picture is identical to this picture. They have just got a little lazy here and they didn't actually show the sulfonate taking the proton um, off. But yeah, there's, um, the protons never just drop off into the ether. They always have to be picked up by somebody. Okay, so yeah, that, we were just confused because in right. every question it was like that. We just right. didn't know why. But okay. that's right. So we wouldn't, since their solution didn't have like the sulfonate taking it off. It, it would still be better for you to put that in your solution, okay. and you certainly but, would get full credit for it if you wrote it that way. Because okay, you know when you do the problem, there's like. Um, you have the solvent over the arrow, but then you pretty much use everything to get the product. And then according to your picture, you have nothing technically left to take the hydrogen away. Mm -hmm. So would you pretend that you have more solvent and that's what you use to take it away? Or would you pretend you that could use like the solvent to deprotonate because you've already got, you always got excess solvent, right? right? The solvent is in excess quantities that you're never going to run out of solvent. So right. you can always use the solvent to deprotonate. Um, uh, if it's somebody who can pick up a proton. But most of the time, the leaving group can also be shown as picking up the proton. Because uh, remember, when the leaving group leaves, it usually ends up with a negative charge. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the leaving like group leaves, ends up with a negative charge. That's yeah. why it tends to Okay. Right. So um, I, uh, most instructors would find it acceptable if you show either the leaving group or the solvent picking up the proton. Um, so whichever one is convenient. Uh, but I think it's a little bit neater to use the leaving group to pick up the proton. So then technically, like, your end result would be that OH and then HBr, if Br was a leaving group. Right. Now, in this particular problem, the leaving group had been the sulfonate. Right. So, so in this particular problem, the products would be... And it wouldn't be wrong if you used that leaving group instead of whatever solvent there was to attach to the H? Like, just it's prepared. Yeah, that's exactly what we did here. We used the leaving group right. to take the proton. So, but it doesn't matter which one you use in the problem, you right. still get full credit. Um, yeah, well, at least, um, so uh, I'm not, uh, you might want to double check that with your instructor. Uh, I, I've known other instructors who specifically <laughs> said that, um, that they didn't mind if you use the solvent or the leaving group. You might, uh, your instructor might be weird and care. So you, you can always double check. But most instructors would let you use either the solvent or the leaving group to pick up the proton. And again, I think it's best, it's neatest to use the leaving group to do that because uh, it usually ends up with this negative charge over here. So again, what we're showing here is that when this deprotonates in this mechanism, we get these two products, and that's the same exact thing that's happening here. They just didn't show who's picking up the proton, but that they really meant 